strong. Hi, and welcome to another tech tutorial with Mira G. Today we're going to look at Google Docs and how you can get a little bit more creative with your use of Google Docs. How do we spice up our Google Docs? All right, so we use Google Docs for so many things, really. Uh, lesson plans, meeting notes, research, etc. But how can we use it to its fullest capacity? So let's go over some of the important functional elements, some of the creative options. So you'll get a chance to try this out with this link to this Google Doc that basically takes you through pretty much everything that I'm going over in this um, tutorial. So look for that link below um, to try this out on your own. So let's look at this document that I'm going to be using as my sort of tester to demo what I'm talking about. So for margins in Google Docs, this is the white space, top, right, bottom, and left border of a document. You need margins for when you print documents. That's why we're not going to set this to like zero. By default, it's set to one inch. And you can change this to say 0.5 inches to give you a little bit more space and you won't have any printing issues. You're going to have a lot less margin, which gives you a little bit more space. So how do we do that? We go to File, Page Setup, and instead of 1, I like to have 0.5. And I like this because it gives me a little bit more space, but it still prints fine. Just know that if you have some tables, it might make it look a little weird when you change the margins. So I would always do this as one of the first things you do. You can also change this to be your default. So if you go under File, Page Setup, you can change it and set it as your default. Now the second thing you saw when I did the page setup was there are two other things you could change. One is page orientation and one is page color. So by default, the orientation is set to portrait, which means that it's long ways from up to down. Um, but actually, this is a new change to Google, and you can have a single document that has a mix of portrait and landscape layouts. Um, and this could be to better fit, say, a table or a chart or graphics that might be on another page. How do you do this? Well, you have to select your text first, and then instead of doing whole document, you just change it to selected content. Um, and by default, the page is white as well. You can just click on the page color option and you can select one of the colors here or you can set a custom color as well. So here's my test document, all right? And you'll notice that I'm using something called Cupcake Ipsum. And that's actually sort of a play off of Lorem Ipsum, which is placeholder text. And Cupcake Ipsum just makes it a little bit I think sweeter. So say I just wanted this page to be portrait uh, and I wanted this page to be landscape, then I would select the text on this page, go under file, page setup, and do selected content. And again, Google's pretty smart. It thinks it knows what you're doing. That's why it's already done the selected content. But you should always just make sure and then click landscape. And then click OK. And what you notice has just happened is it has taken that page um, and it's made this page portrait and this page landscape. So you can now have pages that are landscape and pages that are portrait. So again, this is portrait and this is landscape. All right, so let's talk about page color. So with page color, you have to do it to the whole entire document. So see, this is sort of not working right now. That's because it's saying to this selection. But if I change this to whole document, now I can change the background color. Um, now this isn't really something that I ever really use. Uh, but just know that it's possible. I guess if you wanted to add a table and inside the table is white and you just wanted sort of borders, that's fine. But I don't find this actually a particularly useful feature. So I'm going to just change the whole document back to white and say OK. So what is a table of contents? So a table of contents is a list usually found on a page before the start of a written work. It is a list of different sections. And this makes it easy for you or your collaborators or viewers to quickly navigate to a section in your documents. So let's look at how we would use a table of contents in Google Docs. So when you create a table of contents in Google Docs, it automatically generates one and adds links that jump to each section they reference when clicked, allowing for quick access to specific parts of your document. So what does that exactly mean? It means in your table of contents, it links to title sections of your document that use heading styles. But jumping ahead, 
what if you don't know what a header is? So a header is the title and subtitles you see within an actual text of your document. And you can actually not only decide what text is going to be these different um, styles, but you can also change the look of those styles. So headings provide context and a way to navigate through a document. And they allow us to scan documents visually um, or with a screen reader, which is for people who maybe have accessibility issues, in order to find content we are searching for. So the table of contents uses the headers for the way it displays that information. So here is an example of what that looks like. So Google Docs has styles, and these are predefined text styles that include the normal body text, as well as headers, which are kind of like titles, one, two, and three, one being the biggest and most important, going down from one to two and three, et cetera. And so you, you can customize the font and size of these text styles and set your new changes as the default styles. So how do we do this? Let's go over that. So this is your style menu, all right? You can see that you have a lot of different options. Your normal text is what's selected by default. Um, then you have title, subtitle, heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four. You might even have other additional headings. All right, so what do you do? You basically select the text and then you decide, do you want it to be heading one, heading two, heading three? So you go under the selection menu and then you apply the style that you would like. Once the style has been set to a specific style, you can then see it in the style menu how it shows what type of text it is. So when I select that text, you can see here, selecting over head two or header three, it changes up here what it's listed as. You can change the default style for one of these, okay? So if you make changes to the text, the font size, the size, the color, etc., maybe the spacing, you then go back into this menu here and you can then update it to match that style, all right? So you're not stuck with the default styles. I can go up here and I can actually update my header styles to match this. And you can actually, if you decide to set this as something very specific, you can set it as a default as well. So let's take a look at this in my sample document. And say this was one of my header ones. I can go under here and change it to H1. Now I've already gone in and sort of changed the default settings but um, I can also update it as well. So when I'm on this text, looks like normal text, right? When I'm on this, it changes to header one. Um, and I can change this also to header two. So not only does this um, information come into play when we do our table of contents, but it also visually changes how we read the information. Notice how it changes the importance of different information. This is why titles, subtitles, all those things are important to actually be using the headers, right, instead of just changing them. What it also does is if, say, I go in and I want to change the look of my, say, header two through the whole entire document, if I change the look of this, say I want the color instead to be a orange, I can go into header two and I can update heading two to match. And it updates not just the one that I've done here, but wherever header two is actually applied. So now let's talk about adding a table of contents. So place the insertion point in your document where you want the table of contents to go. Typically, the table of contents appears after the initial title, uh, but before the introduction or body of your document. Click insert, point to the table of contents, and then you have two options. One is a plain text table of contents with numbers on the right side, and the sec second option doesn't use page numbers, but instead inserts hyperlinks that jump to the noted section. This is up to you how you want to use it. The first is intended for documents you'll print, the second for documents that you'll be viewing online. So let's do that together. So say I wanted to insert my table of contents here, I bring my cursor where I want it to be, go insert, table of contents, and say I want this to be using it online, so I want it uh, with links, and I insert. And notice how it's also indented here. Um, say I wanted to add an H3 to this specific text. Again, the level important importance goes down from H1, H2, H3, right? Then I just go over here and I can actually update. And you notice it's also organized it by importance, H1, H2, and then H3. So as I mentioned, headers in the table of contents 
are viewed in a specific way. So each of these styles is treated slightly differently in the table of contents. So as we saw in my example, header one, it's top level entry of the table of contents. Um, headers two is second level of a subsection and it's indented. And then heading three is a subsection of header two and so on and so forth. So as we saw, it goes from top level, second, third, it starts indenting. And this is why we want to meaningfully use our headers. Now let's talk about making an image gallery with tables. This is a great way to separate text and images in Google Docs by rows and columns rather than just lines of text. As of this moment, there's not an easy way to add an image of gallery or a bunch of different images in a Google Doc. And I'm going to show you the best way as of right now you can do that. So go to insert table, mouse over the grid to select the number of cells you want, and then add your images by either insert or dragging and dropping the images. And as you can see, this allows me to start adding images in, into sort of a gallery. Once you have your images, um, you have options. You can crop images, so you double click and then you can like change the actual crop of the images if you want them all to be in sort of the same size. You can merge cells to make one photo larger than the rest of the photos. So you can see here, me, here I am just merging two cells so that I can make the bottom one larger. So there's ways to sort of work around um, and create more of a customized image gallery. So last step is to really make it look like an image gallery. And then what, how you do this is you select the table, you go to the three dots to get more options, and then you select the cells of the table and you can remove the border or change the color or thickness or change the background color. And this really allows you to make it look like you seamlessly added a gallery, but in fact, it's really just a table. You can also be adding creative headers to add visual interest to your document. So look at the two difference right here, process book versus process book. They have two different feels, but they both sort of are a bit more jazzy than using regular text. So how can we actually add creative headers? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do this the bottom of this document that you guys can be using. I go over some of those. There's things like Adobe Spark, Canva, Vengage. You can also use the Google Slides or Google Drawings and customize the size of the drawing or the page layout of the slide to then use that to create a um, header as well. So there's lots of different options as well. But you can also use Adobe Spark. They have a free version and a premium version, same with Canva, and same with Vengage. So again, you only really learn something by doing it, so feel free to use this document right here to go in and try out some of those things that I've just talked about. That link is below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe and like for more.